Welcome to today's show. You know, in most videos, I have done some prep work and it's just me doing talking head stuff. This time, uh, a, a longtime pal of mine, we both happened to be in Arizona and thought we would share a, a conversation with you. So this is just going to be two old guys rambling, uh, both former cops from Southern California and uh, now voluntarists. And you can just kind of listen in and uh, eh, perhaps parts of this will be entertaining to you. You know, there's that something I heard about. I don't know if it was in a launch, but hey, cheers to us. To whiskey. <laughs> to no, whiskey. Not yeah, exactly. To vodka. What's the clear one? Ever. Ever. Yes. Ever water. This is the reverse uh, synthesis or uh, synth synthetic oh, really? or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's make water. Thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so today's video, oh. it's, it's me and my pal Tony, and uh, we're just hanging out and... We thought, hey, let's let's just BS a little bit. I'm in Arizona visiting. He's here at the same time. And we're thinking, hey, why don't we just have a conversation and keep it casual? No real topics. We're just going to BS. Uh, let us know if you like this format. Um, and we, so we were just talking about where <laughs> we're sitting. I will. Yeah. <laughs> we're sitting at these different pipes. Yeah. And I remember in the academy, we were taught about being higher and about having a bigger hat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's why kings used to wear the big, huge headdresses. It's why judges sit on elevated platforms. It's why police officers used to have those cool, goofy uh, hats. hats. Yeah. Also, a long time ago, at least I know in L.A., they had to be over six feet. Really? Which would allow us to still get a job, but right, not but the shorter people. Yeah, not the wee little ones. Yeah. <laughs> ah, or I, or I most women, so, yeah. You know, that's so I think about equality, I think about a woman being a cop. Yeah. And I was just thinking yesterday about it is kind of equal. Everyone who's able to drag the biggest person on the force mm -hmm. out of a burning building gets treated the same. If you're five foot two and weigh 120 pounds, maybe you can't drag. Well, of course, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be on the security force if we were talking. Instead of law enforcement, we were talking private security because I'm overweight. But you take a fit, even a bigger, strong cop, everybody should be able to pull that partner out of a bad situation. Only when you're in the academy, because remember, there's plenty of fat cops after the academy. I mean, That's let's true. just be honest. They're, you know, like you and I are going to look like studs at, yeah. at, in our in our really early fifties yeah. if we were if we were still working for the man and you know. Violating That's true. Rights. There are a few bigger folks there. I remember the Fat Squad when I was in the academy in Orange County, and there were only three, four people on it usually, and then they get washed out and leave. But these poor folks had to go, and we had our hour of lunch break, which was really like 10 minutes because they were you're marching and doing push ups during most of it. Yeah. But they would make the Fat Squad come up with their lunch pails and open them and describe what they had. And then, of course, the, the tactical officers would, I can't believe you're bringing sugar-free yogurt. You're supposed to have fat for your whatever it was. And yell at them, do 10 laps around the building. And these poor people just had such a time. And they weren't even fat at that point. <laughs> Gosh, I'm thinking if I was trying to do that now. Yeah. I was in the academy. I was six foot one, 155 to 160 pounds. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay under 200 these days. But... Um, and they yell at me because I'd eat like three hot dogs for lunch <laughs> with the buns. And I mean, I was yeah. trying to gain weight because, you know, I, I, I wanted to pull that guy out of the building. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, I probably would leave him in now because he was an idiot. But, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> Gosh, it was a whole different time and mentality. I just finished reading Michael Malice's book on uh, the, the White Pill. And it's basically a history of Russia in the last... Uh, 120 years or so, something like that. Maybe we were like 105 years. And it's so interesting, the same stuff that they would do to us in the academy. And I, I think about how gung-ho and strong, and I just didn't even think of going against what the department said or no, what yeah. the government said. It was just everything they said was right. Yeah. And it wasn't a matter of, I think about it on my own, all alone, and I think, I disagree with this, but I'm going to have to play along. No. No. It was just it. so part of me right. that, of course, I'm a dirtbag. You remember uh, Nori, uh, Nora Henry Ida? <laughs> no humans involved. 
Yes. And you actually clear a call. You go to some area where there were poor people who were also criminals. I'm, I'm repeating myself. Most criminals are poor people. Most poor people end up spending some time in jail because they don't have options of, of getting out. And you would, you would clear a call, and basically it was some white trash on white trash or whatever other color. It's not racist to say white on white, but if no. I said anything else, it would be racist, so I won't. But whatever different types of folks... And you clear the call and say, I'll be clear, uh, any, uh, Nora Henry Ida, no humans involved. Right. And that was the calloused way that I thought then. Uh, God, that's or just call the general public Adam Henry's, you know, to the yeah. same. The other words. Yep. <laughs> he didn't want me to cuss, so I almost yeah. said it. You, know? you almost said the jackass word. <laughs> yeah, or the a hole word. Finishing up, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. And, and there was just this attitude of them versus us. It's, it's so nice now being them. Yeah. Uh, instead of us. Well, I truly believe, like, and we've talked about this in other, like, whatever these are called, shows, podcasts, yeah. videos, um, whatever, when you hide the camera and I don't even know it and we have a conversation. <laughs> um, like I now, pull it out later like and you right buy now. me lunch six times. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, it's called Mail of Color. <laughs> yeah. And now I have no idea what I was going to say because I just ranted off. Yeah, see there. I can yeah. catch up on topic. Do you, do you get that Mail of Color? I was going to call it Black Mail. Of Color. Oh, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Mail of Color, but I, yeah. that's, that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, quick thinking. <laughs> I wish I could remember what I wanted to say. Yeah. That would have, that would but it's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> not about yourself. What do you think of me? Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think about law enforcement? Oh, I know what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, you're back. I'm sorry. The, the drugs. Like, I truly, truly believe with all my heart, marijuana, or even coke, or meth, or heroin, which are horrible drugs. Not maybe the marijuana so much, but like, you know, it's, it's horrible, especially if someone got addicted to methamphetamines and ruins their families and stuff. It's their choice, but it yeah. ruins their families, and, you know, until they start beating their children and, and committing violence on other people. It's kind of like a a zero sum issue. It's mm-hmm. just is what it is. But boy, getting that felony arrested, you know. I mean, I remember talking, talking to uh, Rock, whatever. You know, what is that thing of meth? A rock of meth, or whatever. I, I forgot all the cool terminology because <laughs> you know I'm so, lid, so much coke. I think, I think it's no, a lid. A lid. Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. If anyone heard me say I snort coke, because I don't. Yeah. But um, uh, and you know, I talked to this girl, and I didn't have to search. I just talked to her, and then just handed it. You know, she went into her bra and handed me the rock, and I arrested her, of course, because you know, if she's dumb enough to hand it to me, she's dumb enough to live on the streets. But um, you know, and it's like, but who cares? She wasn't yeah. doing anything but walking out of a hotel room where everyone does drugs. You know, yeah. and I don't live in that neighborhood, so who cares if people shoot each other when I leave? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so how how would we if we had the power? I look at some things that people do, and, and there's some bad people who do some bad things, and there's some good people who do some occasional bad things. Right. But there are some bad things that happen out there, and most of the calls I went on weren't things that you needed a, an armed person to get people involved in bureaucracy. Like, that wasn't needed in most cases. However, I think that in any society, wouldn't there need to be some big tough guys who kind of go around making sure that the jerks don't pick on the weaker people. Right. And I don't know how that would be, uh, what that would look like in a, in a private security or a dispute resolution organization, some of those ideas that have been put forth. I don't know exactly how that would work. Yeah, it, it's it, the power and control that humans want to have over other humans mm-hmm. is so historical. Yeah. You know, I mean, when isn't there a time when there's some sort of a ruler and some sort of a group of people that are making sure that ruler's propped up, and you know, um, yeah, it's it, it's like loving freedom and and being pro law enforcement at the same time. I yeah, we the were, bumper stickers. Yes, the stickers. <laughs> right. See, we were right in the yeah. conversation, though. and yeah. and it's also when you're just talking about that, you know, good guys. That that saying about sometimes good guys have to do bad things to bad people. Mm-hmm. Well, is that? The slippery slope there, because it's like, well, I'm good, but let me go be bad real quick. Let me go beat some guy down a little harder than I should, because he's a bad person, yep. and I'm just trying to do good. Yeah, you know, and and that's why you can look at some of these 
abuse things that happen, police abuse type stuff. And, and, and you get people like, well, but you know, Rodney King, he was, I think he was on acid. And you know, look at his history. He used to beat his wife. Okay, then let's deal with that. But, yeah. you know, let's, do we really need to, you know, beat him down that much? I don't know. I'm not, not getting into that too much. But you know, yeah. he was definitely beat up when he rolled through the jails when I was watching him. Mm -hmm. You know, he, Oh, yeah, you were in the jail system at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So... That it's it's such a challenge because having been on the streets, I know that there are some they the criminal class, and when I say criminal class, I don't mean the the marijuana smokers, <laughs> but I mean like real mal prohibitum type, uh, not mal prohibitum mal and say crimes that are just wrong by their very nature. Yeah, the rapes, murders, yeah, drive by people, shooters. You know, they're not following the rules, and yet. As a police officer, you have to follow the rules. And the most efficient, effective police officers at getting those truly bad guys off the streets, you're, you're probably not going to have much success if you do everything by the book. It's just it's going to take forever. There's so much bureaucracy, it'll never happen. But if you have that really bad dude, but you can't get him on what he really does, because he has an IQ of over 70, which if you have that, you're probably not going to get busted for something. The guy has the IQ over 70, and you can't get him for shooting that person, but you could plant some coke on it. And then you still get them off the streets for a couple of years. There was an argument for making stuff happen within a broken system. But then, as you say, slippery slope. What's then to say, well, I can't get him for, for smoking marijuana, but I can get him for trying to buy it. Right. Well, then it just becomes this subjective personal opinion thing. I guess it comes down to private property. And in your house, you can have the rule, betting all on meth is okay, but I don't want any of that weed or beer in here. Mm -hmm. And if I can have a different rule in my house, and then we have the right to make the rules in our house and enforce the rules and hire our servants, our security guards, our maids, our pool boy, in my family's case. Um, <laughs> those that's, pools that your family has. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. We have one, but we kind of share with <laughs> <laughs> Other people keep popping in with me. Yeah. What is this community <laughs> crap? It's like a lot of these hotel rooms you go to. It's like, wait a minute, I thought I was getting one alone. What's another yeah. family doing in here? And why is the number of cards they gave me wrong? Uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows? And so that's a completely different point. In Arizona, there is a law that says. I, I can't go down to the, the community pool here in the condo complex. If I go down there and I just want to sit under the, is it called a, a pergola or a vendola or a vendetta or something? The shade? Yeah, the shade. Yeah, here. Yeah, the 70 IQ is shade for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the sun don't shine so bright. If I want to just go sit there and read a book, I have to open the cover off of the pool. Wait, was that just telling that I have a 70 or under IQ and I was a cop. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> balance, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's such a stupid law. Yeah. I didn't know that was a law. But yeah. yeah. And I guess the concern is that if somebody is there, then everybody, somebody else who walks up is going to assume that the pool is open. And if they jump in and they land on top of the cover, they can drown. Oh. Except they're drown proof covers. Yeah, so I don't know how that... I feel like it's just a good rule to have so that you can find out who is and isn't going to pay attention to the rules and obey. That's a good point. Yeah. And I guess in more later years, I wish there was some way that you could, like with facial recognition, you could know who to facially recognize and who isn't worth that. I wish there was some symbol we could put on our face right. to know if we're obedient or not. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to use the word, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean... The control thing, too. Okay, like street signs. How many street signs you stop? There's no one around. It could have been a yield sign. It could have just been a, hey, idiot, slow down a little bit so you don't hit the jackass. Oops, sorry, the guy that's, you know, coming across the street <laughs> on his bike because bicyclists never stop at stop signs. Like, just slow down a little bit. But it's, no, it's like, they want you to stop in the middle of nowhere. You know, and then what if you're driving through an empty mall parking lot at, like, midnight, you know, like, I mean, picture like uh, Back to the Future, right? When they're just mm -hmm. doing their tests and you're like the guy cruising the car in the parking lot. Like, they want you to stop. There's no one around. It's like, I think you could yield. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, I do feel like it's a lot of the stuff that we are forced to do is just to keep us in compliance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, I, and 
watching now that I have a daughter that's doing uh, online schooling compared to showing up to class every day. Like she's thinking more freely. She is managing her time better. She's getting her work done quicker. She's getting A's still. And it's, but yet she's able to do it on her own flexible schedule as a high schooler. Mm -hmm. And I'll guarantee you, there will not be an active shooter while she's at school. Yep. When she's being homeschooled. <laughs> yep. uh, unless I decide to come in after shooting and put my guns away, but no yep. one will be actually shooting. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A gunman entered our home. Yeah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, was me. Dad's home. <laughs> actually, that's what I wish all of us would do who are armed, peaceful, fun loving, nice, good neighbors, peaceful people. I wish we could make more social media posts that. Today, in Prescott, Arizona, a gunman <laughs> entered the Shoney's Big Boy restaurant. <laughs> yeah. He had a happens. great burger that was cooked medium rare, <laughs> and tipped the waitress well and left. <laughs> yeah, and nothing happened. Yeah, nothing That's happened. Funny. Yeah, we're, we're all, we're mostly good people. I don't know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting world we live in, and, and I've got to look at how we sit. As much as we complain, when I think about developing countries, when I think about, uh, this is uh, 2023, and there are a couple of religious groups that are using their governments to claim that they have problems with their neighbors and then there's some real tension going on. It's sad to see people who are hearing bombs and rockets going off outside, not knowing if the next one's going to land on their house, to be among the millions or billions of people who are starving to death. And, and here we are in our comfortable, air-conditioned Homes, go. We're gonna head out to lunch in a little bit. Did you hear my stomach growl just now? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for saying it's that. Because time. It's, I mean, times are tough right now. Like I had a protein shake before I hit the gym, and then hopped into my new truck to come see you. But times are freaking tough, dude. I'm hungry. Yeah. I mean, it's probably noon, and I haven't eaten. Yeah, it is. What the heck? I mean, get an appetizer. I know there's like know. Ukrainians and like Middle Eastern people who are like getting bombed and, and all that, but I'm hungry, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I get something I like. <laughs> And I love a term that uh, one of my clients use, and, and one of my businesses is offering a, a, an expensive service to high net worth people. And we do tell people, Capitalist. yeah, <laughs> we do tell people before we spend extra or we have them do the, the, the next thing up, is like, oh, okay, this is going to be extra. And I, I love what one client once said. He said, Shepard. Don't you don't need to talk to me about that. This is when I go out to the restaurant, I order extra guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> and that was basically his way of saying, Hey, we're here to have fun. Right. If it's 200 extra or 2000 extra, we don't care, we just want to have a good time. Yeah, so that's kind of how I think uh, we're so fortunate, even the poorest of us in the, the jurisdiction uh, controlled by the U.S. government in, in this area. Even if you are dirt poor, you probably have a TV and a phone and a car and all this stuff. So we are so yeah. fortunate. My, my, my friend has a home around here that's in the not as high wealth as your home, but um, a nice area nonetheless. But, you know, homeless people in Arizona because the weather's so wonderful. Um, and she had to shoo a guy off because he was charging her phone on an outdoor outlet. He, he was homeless, but he had needed a phone charger. So oh, that he was funny. using her. So of course, you know, she's like, "Well, I'm not paying for this guy's phone. I don't want him, you know, hanging around yeah. on my property." <laughs> yeah. And uh, so you know, she hired an electrician to put like some lockbox on it or something. You know? <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, it's like the homeless are, you know, and they're going and, and their their shopping carts are like brand new here. Yeah. You know, it's like. Like, Wheels don't are you kidding me? Or the jackets are basically not torn. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, it's it's. Well, the other day is they. I, I only heard a news blip because I don't try to uh, get stuck watching the news too much. But Good. they were saying, okay, you know, things are going on in Israel, and and Hamas is bad, and and some people in America think that the Jewish people are bad, and you know, even though traditionally we're supposed to always love them no matter what. Um, and, but it was like, well, Hamas is pissed, so now us Americans better watch out. We better be more vigilant because now we're, they're threatening to attack us on our home because, of course, we're pro-Israel. Our country is, at least our government mostly is. Right. Um, and it's like, wow, they really don't want us to be comfortable in our own space. Yeah. 
They want so do they want us to start carrying rifles in the back of our pickup trucks? Or do they just <laughs> want us to stay home and be afraid? Because yes. most of us are gonna be like, Well, guess I need to throw a rifle in my pickup truck because the clock ain't gonna cut it, you know. Yep. And but are, are they just trying to scare the millennials? Because that's you know, they're the easy Everyone ones to scare. Your life. Yeah, I guess. Then there has to be a boogeyman. Yeah. But for, for the longest that. time, and I not to sound so blunt and edit this if you need to, but the black man was the boogeyman, literally. And, and and I would say that that uh, that that crazy news ish producer guy Michael Moore, I think, is his name, um, it came out with something where it really exposed the news media and how it's like a black man today shot three white people, a black man today did this, a black you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, well now we've. We don't need that anymore because we've got the the uh, Middle Eastern males, you know, that that might yep. be the terrorist bombers and and you know this whole other thing that they can scare us with. Yep. And then they pick the, the half of the people or a third of the people to scare them about one thing. It, and if I walk up to one of my left leaning friends and say, "Oh my gosh, aren't you scared about the illegal Mexican aliens?" They're like, "No, they're a bunch of sweet single mothers." coming over with their kids, trying to have a better life. And then if I say that to my conservative friend, I'm like, yeah, no kidding. There are all these murders and rapists coming over. And I think, well, what can I scare this liberal friend about? They're not scared enough of the illegal alien. Uh, The earth is not cooling, uh, warming, and the climate is changing, and we have to take action now, or we're all going to crispy, and it's going to be horrible. And they're like petrified by it. I'm like, hey, maybe that'll work with the, the conservative person. And I go talk to them. And eh, they're not quite as scared by it. Right. But there's always this new, oh, North Korea. Oh, why haven't we heard of North Korea much recently? Yeah. Well, I thought Venezuela was going to be a big deal. Oh, I thought, I th- and then it just seems that maybe our government is going quashing all of the pro- uh, problems, the to possible save, problems. To save us. Thank you, man. Save. Maybe that's why I don't hear about them, because right. they're so good. It takes billions and trillions of dollars, but they're yeah. safe. <laughs> yep. Because what would we do with that money anyway? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. We wouldn't want it not to be taken from us. Upgrade the shopping carts to even nicer yeah. shopping carts for the homeless people? <laughs> Come on. They don't need Gore-Tex. <laughs> What's going to happen when, when there's no more value to the U.S. dollar? Is it going to be the central bank digital currency that I, I hear about? Uh, what are, what's going to happen? Like, there's no way, as a person inter- interested in Austrian economics, in other words, you have a monopoly game going, and you go and you throw two people who are playing ten times the money that was already on the table, but you don't change the rules or the value of hotels. Like, I think Austrian economics thinking, that can't work. Like, mm. there's got to be crazy inflation. It's got to go horribly bad. And yet, despite the inflation, $7 something whopper the other day, I thought they were two or three bucks. Yeah. They're not anymore. It's been a while since I've had one. I can say that because I'm so healthy. Um, but now they're seven bucks for something, for a whopper. Does that come with fries and a drink? No. Because I don't go to those places. That's a sandwich because it's just while you're healthy and you're not overweight. Um, that's yeah, but I usually bake at home. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your cookies, your chocolate chip cookies. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need inquiries about that. Yeah, 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 you don't need the paper <laughs> business. Uh, okay, so as far as if the money is no longer worth anything, and, right. and what are we going to use for values? Obviously, everyone thinks like, oh, ammo, gold, silver is going to be you know a good asset when. They completely ruin the dollar or whatever other type of, do they call it fiat currency? I get confused because it's like, what does a car have to do with our currency? But, you know, I mean, you see the little fiat strike. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this the new thing? Yeah, I, I bought a hundred of them yesterday, yeah. so maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, first on race day. <laughs> yeah. I know what's wrong with it. It's a Ford. You know what they say Ford stands for, don't you? It stands for fix it again, Tony. You're thinking of a fiat, Dale. Fix it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> half the people watching have probably never even heard of fiat. That, One of my true. friends asked me, she says, what's an Alfa Romeo? Or, I'm like, <laughs> um, 
It's, it's, I don't, yeah, it's a car. <laughs> People don't really like them. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a dealership for it, yeah. so it must be doing okay. <laughs> um, yeah. There's always going to be the higher ups that are going to be rich, and there's always going to be the people working for them, you know. Yeah, and there, I don't really see a a problem with rich people who know how to make money and keep it, keeping it, and getting richer. That's awesome, as long as it's a, a, a as long as there are no moral rules being broken to make that happen. If it's truly someone who starts their business does really well, takes over the market, continues to do really well, and provide a great service, and they're honest in what they do, then great. I'm glad that you're, you know, have a series of 18 car dealerships in this metropolitan area. That's awesome. Way to go. I think, for me, the challenge is when the laws are made, when the government steps in to help the big guy and hurt the little guy. Um, an example of that in a, a restaurant, a, a, a sandwich shop, here in the, the greater Phoenix area, you can probably go rent a little 700 square foot commercial uh, strip mall slot in a poor area for a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. So if you do that and, and you've maybe saved up $10,000 and your rich uncle is going to loan you 7000 so you've got $17,000 to start your restaurant up. Well, there's no way you can do that because even if you can buy the equipment and rent the space, when you go to the county to get your health permit and your building occupancy permit and this and that and the other thing, they're going to require you to have a sustainability plan for d disposal of hazardous oils and liquids or whatever, a mm -hmm. three-bin sink, all of these things right. that, yeah, I like healthy restaurants. I don't like people dumping grease in the street out front. But Quiznos can come in and they already have their national pieces of paper, their, their booklets on their environmental impact statement or this or that. And they can just plop them down and so there's a Quiznos there instead of a Mon Pa. Right. And that's not cool. Uh, I don't think that would happen in a free society. But where the government's not giving them an advantage necessarily, correct me if I'm wrong, but they just already have their stuff together. And they've already done it before. Now, there's plenty of people who've, who've built a restaurant here, and they're like, okay, I've got this down, and this has worked, so I'm going to go open up another location mm -hmm. over here. Um, and, I don't, and, and the government's still making sure they have their three-hole sink and you know, making sure they're not dumping hazardous waste in the streets and all that stuff. They just already know how to do it. But it's the barrier that goes into place. And if it wasn't for government, then... That, that barrier wouldn't be there. And the reason the barrier is there, the reason the government puts it there, is, and I'm not picking on Quiznos specifically, but the big national chain goes to the town and says, don't you think it would be a good idea to have rules that, you know, we have to have a, an environmental impact statement done? And we just, you know, we're noticing a lot of these hacks aren't doing that. And the local town council says, yeah, let's do that. And they don't realize that it costs the new person 10 grand to get one, and the other company just prints off another copy, changing the, the name of the city. Right. And so if those rules weren't in place, I think you would have people who were dumping oil in the streets and washing their meat and hands in the same uh, sink. There would be some issues, and then people would get sick, and then they would sue them, and then they would go out of business. And I, I still trust that rudimentary free market so much more than the the top the people with money persuading the government to make rules that only people with money can afford to do. Right. Well, yeah, and on the same but different, I, I think also um, Cabela's, for example, who sells firearms, would get a tax advantage for coming into a town that's kind of an up-and-coming, growing town. But Joe's Gun Shop, not so much. And so Joe's Gun Shop still tossing money to the government at top rate, and Cabela's is sitting there going, okay, great. We've got a $3 million, uh, you know, break because mm -hmm. we're going to bring in, you know, we're going to help this, this city grow. That That is, is definitely, for the guys with the 70 and under IQs, <laughs> simpler for me to understand. Yeah. And uh, I think we are sponsored by Subway. So yeah. be careful. Big thanks to Subway. <laughs> Go get yourself a footlong. <laughs>
Okay, so I watched this show on Netflix called, I don't know if we're allowed to pitch, I'm not really pitching it necessarily, I just happened to watch it. It's called Old Dads or Older Dads or something like mm. that. It's a, and Bill Burr is a comedian. Oh, cool. And yeah. He's in it. And I think it, it, looking at the credits, he like wrote it, produced it, and oh, you know, awesome. starred in it. So, but it's great because it reminds me, A, of how old I am, <laughs> and, and B, like, I mean, how, how hard, if you don't, literally stay with the current mindset that you're told to believe or, or told how to act, you know, the, the them, they's the, the he hems or whatever. Uh, I thought hymns were things in church, but now they're gender <laughs> thing or whatever. Um, and, you know, knowing, t- knowing that you, you can't um, even talk about someone's race sometimes, you know, I mean, I'm an Italian but you can call me a WAP. You can call me a Dago WAP. You can call me a stupid Dago WAP. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I, you know, my, my family was probably in the mafia at some point. Who knows? You know, but, and, and who cares? You know, um, yeah. And, yeah. and certainly I'm sure I have mem- family members that were slaves as well because we all, they, they came over on a boat and, you know, who knows mm-hmm. what they, they had to deal with when they got here or wherever else they went. But um, it's, it's funny because, like, in this show, it's this guy, he's just trying to get through society without just losing his crap <laughs> at every turn. <laughs> and, I mean, even to the point where, like, he's doing everything he can to keep his kid in, in this private school. But, like, this private school is so politically correct that, like, he can't even just be frustrated about something without him just being demeaned for his thinking. Ah. His, old, his old white way of thinking. And I shouldn't necessarily say white because there's a black character in there too that's in the yeah. same problem of trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's that's an older guy also. But um, Interesting. I'm yeah. surprised that Netflix has that on. Well, I mean, it's a great show. It's hilarious. It's a comedy. Yeah, they are a political action organization. Okay. I mean, like, everything I've seen on there is so woke. Well, this is. This is like showing the guys our age have our heads up our butt. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that we okay. better figure it all out. Right, you okay. know, Or else we'll lose our wives and our kids will hate us. And, right. You know, okay. they, they will, our children will have an advantage in life with private schools. And, right. You know. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm listening to this, I'm like, he's my hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's the bad guy. He's the God. bad guy. He's the villain. No, there's the villain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh Jeez. Yeah, it's 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 silly because none, none of it really matters. Like if we weren't told to care, if we weren't told it was a big deal, then most of us wouldn't think anything was a big deal. Right. Like like I think that the typical person who is gay or transgender or of a different color than I am wouldn't really care. Like we don't have a beef with each other. No, I don't. Doesn't bother me one bit. We would almost need a third party to come in from the outside and say, "Hey, by the way, you know, you people have been really bad toward those people, so you should probably say different words." And these people are thinking, "No, like, yeah, give me crap about being a a, a whacked or whatever. Yeah, or, a whack. Oh, or, or, you You're not whack. allowed to call me a wop. Oh, yeah, it's true. Wop. You can't yeah. call me a wop. <laughs> a person of wop. A <laughs> person of wopness." <laughs> A Whopper! Yeah. <laughs> Going back to fast yeah. food restaurants. We would all get along if we didn't have somebody telling us not to. Yeah. I think. Oh, we would all. We'd have our issues. We'd all jump sure. into each other. But for the most part, let me ask you that. You've seen some life. Are people basically good or basically bad? Oh, 100% good. Okay. Not 100% of the people good, but right. 100% my opinion is that people are basically good. Okay. Right. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, I agree. I I think without that, um, we wouldn't live in as good of a world as we live in. Like, if the only reason that my house wasn't broken into last night was because there's a rule against it, and people don't want to break the law, they're scared of breaking the law. But I think people would have risked it. Yeah, I think it's good that out of every hundred people, there are only one or two who would be the kind of person who would break in. And then maybe one of those people is out of commission for whatever reason, and the other maybe is scared. Right. But if half the people were willing to, to kill and steal and such, uh, not steal legally, but steal Ill- illegally, yeah, yeah, it, would be a, it wouldn't be a pleasant world that we live in. Yeah, but stealing legally makes it a lot more pleasant. 
He's you, you brought it up. Isn't that the so truth? I just wanted to point it out. <laughs> truth? Well, yeah. You know, who, who cares if you're paying an extra 4 or $5 because it's tax? And you're just going to, yeah. you just like, well, I know this is $20, but I'm going to pay $24, you know, or whatever tax will come out to. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about this since I'm on my fall walkabout and I'm staying at various hotels in various towns. I'm looking at the rates. It's oh, just yeah. like, I'm okay if the price of soap goes up and the, the price of housekeepers goes up and you have to raise prices for that reason. But these uh, lodging taxes, that the tax you don't have to pay, mm-hmm. that they convince local people to steal from visitors. Right. So that they can spend the stolen money to market to more visitors to come who will pay. It is, it's, well, but they're using the roads and we have to... I, it's just the most. They're also using the restaurants, keeping your business for set, you know, uh, in business. Yeah, they're buying products. They're enjoying everything that you know your little town yeah. has to offer. It's funny. Well, speaking of like feeling that that people are generally good, I I think you find that mostly in you find that mostly in um, when you're in the zone of people that have like interests. So let's just say you like shooting guns. Mm-hmm. You're hanging out with other shooters. It's like, you got, you know, and, and they're great people. And then, the, you know, if you're in the horse community, um, man, horse people are wonderful. You know, if, if you're in the dog training community, if, if you're in the croquet community, golf, whatever, it's like any golfer is going to say, oh, I love golf and golfers are wonderful people to be around. I would probably fall asleep talking to a golfer. <laughs> Like, no, I mean, uh, great, go chase a white ball. That's cool. Or whatever other color ball you want to chase. I'm not saying you have to be chasing a white one. Um, but, like, you know, it, it's... But, yeah, I, I think that's when you see it. And when you don't see it is when you come across someone who um, who just has, A, a totally different outlook on life and totally different interests. And, you know, then it's just like, man, I got nothing to connect with this guy. And, gosh, he's kind of a jerk. Yeah. You know, then you're like, uh, hmm. My glass, my sunglasses are missing. I wonder if that guy took yes. them. Yes. You know, because someone in the horse world like me wouldn't take them. We're honest people. Right. But those right. golfers, you know, they're carrying sticks around all the time. Big bags yeah. to hide stuff in, you know. Yeah. They're getting away in little carts. You know, they're probably the bad <laughs> they're guy. They're probably the, the, the glass <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's, I just finished a book, The Righteous Mind, and it talks about how humans, it's kind of this natural... Um, evolutionary or creationary, whatever, what thing that people tend to form their cliques and they form their little tribes and then they go, they butt heads with the other tribes. And it's kind of a natural thing for critters to do, including humans. It's uh, it's weird. I, I guess there's some reason for it that I don't understand or that I, that I haven't bought into, kind of like national patriotism, which is, I guess, the elevated level of that. I'm just like, I don't really care. Like, I, I choose to spend my time, most of my time, in the United States government's jurisdiction. But if I went to the Mexican government's jurisdiction for a couple of weeks, it's not like I'm thinking, oh, like, I, I can't wait to get back where I can hear my government's song. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of this government's song. Oh, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Like, right. I don't have a preference of one group of things over another. Right. I don't, feel like... I don't know. When you were talking about that, and with the stuff I was just talking about too, and we're in Arizona, and I was thinking about how snakes, right? We're we're just like we've always said, you know, humans are animals. Okay, in this case, maybe reptilian, because, <laughs> for my example. But like the, I think it's called the bull snake, and again, not being a native Arizonian, uh, but like the bull snake or king snake, they're like good snakes. They're big and they're good snakes, and they go and they kill rattlesnakes. So they always tell me on my property. Uh, if you see a bull snake or a king snake, don't you know? Don't hurt them. Let them be because they'll kill the other snakes. And it's like, okay, well, are, are they authorized by the government to go kill these other snakes? that are so bad. I'll be mean, like, what's the situation for them, and, and how did that occur? Mm-hmm. You know. So then, uh, this was the other time, that we, the other video. I think we were talking about stuff. But then you, you wonder, okay, if we were in a free society. Uh, protection that's not government protection type of thing. Would we figure that out and just know that there's people that are just going to go? Or I guess it's I guess the bull snake is like vigilante snake because it's going out to kill the yeah. other known bad snakes. Mm-hmm. Um, 
yeah, without without being told to do it, without being paid to do it. That's just their natural thing to do. And people want them around. So, of course, I'm not going to kill the good snake. Yep. Yep. My wife took a pistol class, tactical pistol class, maybe 10 years ago from a guy who was involved in this group. And then I just had a guy I was dealing with with a church security consultation thing who quit his job with this big national church as their director of security to go off. Both of these guys are in this private group. They go out and they hunt child sex traffickers. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that, yeah. And like it's an and, operation something or other, I think. Yeah. Like and what guys our age mm-hmm. and they've kind of been there and done that and they have a certain set of skills. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and then they're able to go and the the you know if the other governments are like, yeah, come on in and do your thing. That's mm-hmm. that's fine. And we understand there might be some shots fired and just do what you gotta do and be, be nice about it. As long as you're killing the bad people. Yep. And I think about that. Well there's our answer. It looks like there's some Silverbacks who will step up and say, "Yeah, I can take six months of my life. I'm, I'm retired now. I'll take six months and go." But the play. people that are experts at training and of, of of being trained that way were all trained by the government. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you think about it, it's like, oh, well, there's that. So would good training happen if there wasn't the government? Right. Yeah. yeah. Would people want to shoot well? Right. And to not get hit by bullets and know how to duck. Go around corners. Yeah, because if you're not having the taxpayers pay for your ammo, are you really going to be a good shot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's something I'm so jealous as a guy who shoots occasionally. I am so jealous of the special forces. Not not the not for levels, the job they do, but for the top thousand of them who basically just have 55 gallon barrels of ammo. They they dip in, they load their mags, and there, there's no thought of. Well, I better only shoot, let's see, it's, box is 15 bucks now. If I shoot 10 boxes, that's 150 bucks. Eh, I better not shoot more than 10 boxes today. Yeah. And these guys are like, no, they have a million, they have unlimited. Unlimited, yeah. 55 gallon drums yeah. full of ammo. Really. They're practicing full auto 308s out of a helicopter yeah. and shooting them into the <laughs> rocks because they yeah. can. It's training. It's training, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, for social media. <laughs> yes, yep, yep. <laughs> Some of the stuff, some of the waste back when I was a po po. Um, yeah. I think about, I was on a, a SWAT team at one point, and the FBI hostage rescue town, uh, rescue team was in town to do some, some training in that area, and they had their black helicopters. And so our SWAT. Like the guy, ones that are out there watching us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway. Our, <laughs> sorry. I'm not paranoid. Our local SWAT guy connected with them, and I think in retrospect, he was like, okay, give my guys a little thrill. Like, instead of us getting them ice cream this month, we give them a little helicopter ride, just like you went to Grand Canyon. Right. But, but we all, we did this exercise where they picked us up at the FBO up in, by the airport, and, and we all were in our formation with our guns at ready, and the helicopter lands, and then we get on it, and then it flies us 10 miles away, blacked out. Yeah. Because that matters. Yeah. At night. And we're hovering over our own city, blacked out in a helicopter. And then we land at the school parking lot and we get out in our formation and the training's over. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> we thought we were such hardcore. Uh, uh, You're operators. Yeah, we're operators. Operators. We're like, yeah, we know what it's like to be. <laughs> right. It's like, poor Timmy almost tripped and skinned his hand. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, no, we weren't quite as. As we, and well, that, what that costs the federal government. Mm-hmm. Like a helicopter for, we probably spent two or three hours with this. Right. It had to be a couple grand plus mm-hmm. their pilot plus their. Yeah. It was like, that's completely wasted getting these boys with their toys some ice cream for them. Right. <laughs> I know. That is funny. Yeah, it's but it's good to be rich as a government, I think. Yeah, so, that's the way to go. You know, I mean, if, if you're if you're gonna be for the government, you may as well be for the rich government. Yes, yeah. So, because those poor governments. Have you seen their helicopters? I mean, yeah. It's... You know, I'm not going to take away from the the bravery of any person who defends themselves, their family, their community, their tribe. In their heart of hearts, they really are trying to do the right thing, and maybe they've been informed differently than my worldview currently is. Sure. But I really got to hand it to the people who don't have the rich governments. And like... They figure it out. This soldier has a $30 million helicopter and a $200 million airplane and a this and a that and an $8 billion aircraft carrier and a 
$200 billion a month or a year, whatever budget behind them, along with unlimited set. And this dude over here, like, has an AK-47. And he knows how to off. make road bombs. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> he's finding a way, and yeah. he doesn't have the privilege of traveling 12,000 miles away to defend his community. So he's actually defending it kind of in his community. Actually defending his community. Yeah. And, like, God, you got to be kind of tough to go up against the one of the finest, most well-tuned machine, military machines in the world. That uh, literally do it for survival. Yeah. Yeah, they do it. They learn how to shoot that AK or learn how to make that improvised explosive device yeah. strictly for survival, you know? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they're surviving our government attacking them. Let's just be honest. Yeah. But, but it's their it's their land. This, mm -hmm. this land was their land, and here we are. Well, <laughs> our oil land. Yeah, that's true. So, okay. We do own all the oil in the whole world. Yeah, kind of had to go over there. They shouldn't have built their houses on top of our oil. They didn't want us to go over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, you know, I'm definitely just, for the record, and for those of you who have the power to put us in Guantanamo Bay, we think those people are horrible, and we support the people who are attacking them, not the people who are saying they're good with AK-47. We do not support them at all. But, yeah. I don't know who I support. I'm confused. My, yeah, I don't really 70, have any. My 70 and below IQ. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, I can just sit Happy here. Happy like, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I like helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice having friends that are smarter. That's why I hang out with you. Oh, oh. that's a good point. But <laughs> this is not real true, though. <laughs> I wish it was. You're a, you're a bright dude. Well, you know, it, it's... I, I do respect the guys that have the guts to go out and jump out of helicopters. And I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. I mean, you're on, what is this, a second floor? And I'm scared to death just looking out the window. But, you know, it's like these guys are doing crazy things and, and they have the great training and all that. And I respect them and I love that they are fighters and I love that they basically will probably never turn against their own country um, unless they're told to. But <laughs> that's the problem is unless yeah. they're told to. And, yeah. and that goes back to to what frustrates me about people that love freedom and are for military and law enforcement because, mm -hmm. and it's, it's the thing that, you know, it's probably going to get me shot in the parking lot, but it's the thing that, that is the most hypocritical thing of freedom, loving, freedom, loving people is that they want to be free, but they want to support law enforcement. They want to support military, but it's those two people that are following the orders of the corrupt politicians. Mm -hmm that are doing whatever they have to do because that's their job. They're just doing their job. And it comes back to, it's they're taking away our freedoms. And we've said this before in, in other clips or whatever these are called, but um, I forgot what I was gonna say. So. International premieres is what we call these. Yeah, uh, uh, but you know, and it's, it's, yeah, it's frustrating because they're great people and they're fighters and they're heroes and they're warriors and all that. And the problem is they're listening to the wrong people. Yes. If if their true passion was freedom, liberty, freedom, freedom fighters. Yes. And you said, okay, to you, what does liberty mean? This is well, a person should be able to start a business without having to ask some committee or central planner if it's okay. Right. People should be able to drive on a street without doing getting a license. People should be just basic freedom stuff. You shouldn't have any money taken from you by somebody who wants to go out and do good. They should have to be like all other charity organizations and persuade you to give them money. That's what I fight for. Yeah. Awesome. We need you, you hardcore tough guy. Yeah. Like, thank you. Right. But yeah, when they get co-opted by somebody who says, okay, see that guy? He has a joint. Um, go beat him up and shoot him and his dog. Right. And then if he asks you what in the hell you're doing to him, just say, oh, providing freedom. Right. Huh? What? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Yep. Well, the, the good news is, even though there are some things wrong in the world, we still have the freedom, probably because of freedom fighters, hikers, to go out now and have a nice meal, an overpriced meal. With tax. With tax. <laughs> With some taken off the top. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. No, we, it's, we live in a good place. It's, it's fine. That's why we're still here and not somewhere else. Best of all the places that have problems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know who to thank for that because, you know, I feel like I could probably do most of it on my own. Yes.
You know, Especially I do if they think they gave me all my tax money back. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that you say your tax money and not their tax money. Yeah. Um, I don't pay them their taxes. So yeah. I, I have my money confiscated. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's a. It, I do think that I, I could live anywhere I want. I choose to live here in the United States, government's jurisdiction. I make that choice. I do think it's the best place to live currently. Um, but I think I would be kind of an idiot to say, okay, the best car I can find is this, you know, let's pretend we're living in 1982, is this particular Cadillac DeVille is the best car I can find. I'm glad that there was somebody out there dreaming of the next level Ferrari and Lamborghini. And go, oh, hey, I have an idea for something even better than that. Oh, here, I have an idea for how you can go short distances within a city on electric and it goes really fast. And then if it's a hybrid, then, okay, you know, Running out of electricity a third of the way in your trip. You just right. switch over and you go. Like, that makes good sense. I love technological advances. Yeah. Um, and I just wish that you could have, you, you could put out the idea of technological advances in society for things social without, oh, that would never work. You'd never, I've never seen a, a car run on electricity like they were saying in 1982. Yeah. I've never seen one that could go 150 miles just on electricity. Why didn't the jetpacks? Why didn't the jetpacks make it, dude? Why don't we have jetpacks? I don't even know what it was used for, like as far as what was making them be jets. I don't know what yeah. fuel or electricity yep. or whatever. But I feel like that was a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think that there could be technology that would be so much better than what we have now if there weren't three-letter agencies shutting it down. I think that the reason there aren't jetpacks and a bunch of other stuff. 99% of those other ideas would fail, maybe jetpacks would have. But if you're not squishing innovation and experimentation and new technology, there would be more of it out there. Yeah. The more good stuff would be true. You, you mentioned that you're glad this is the, you can live in any country you want, and this is, we can't actually. You know, we can't actually go live in any country we want. We would be illegals. Um, and if you left this country permanently, you get charged for leaving. To give up your U.S. citizenship, mm -hmm. I think it's twenty seven hundred dollars or something. Mm -hmm. um, they charge you before you leave, and which is cheap compared to the amount of taxes you pay every year. But um, <laughs> but you don't get to just go to another country and become a citizen. Yeah, any different than here, quite honestly. You and, have to get signed up on their farm, let them brand you. Yeah, so you get to be the one who gets your milk every day. Yeah, because they're like social security numbers are just like bank account numbers you can loan against. It seems you know yep. they take take money out anyway. Yeah, well, that's why if you when countries take over another country, you take over the systems they have in place. Right. If we went to take over Canada, when I say we, I don't mean the United States government. Just you and I, yeah. But I think right. once we finish the water and have some lunch, we'll have the energy. Right. We go, we take over Canada. What do we want? Then we're like, okay, we own everything. Cool. Well, that doesn't help us. But if we have a building we can go to that has all the files, and these people are sending us a quarter or a third or half of everything they earn every year, hmm. that's where the value is. Give me your books, your uh, book of accounts. Right. Like, like when you buy a business, how many customers do you have? Well, we have 100,000 customers and 30,000 of them are repeat customers that for, you know, every year they're coming back. Okay, that list is worth a lot. Well, yeah. I think that's what governments do when they, when they want to go take over another one. It's not like the U.S. government would go take over the Iraqi government and go in and look at all the books there that show what people are, are having taken from them and say, ah, we don't need those. True. Yeah. No, they're all there. Yeah. Plus, I think if we were to take over Canada, it'd be easy because if we're in cars and all of their cops are on horses, we're <laughs> so going to outrun yes. them. See? Right? We, I mean, we know our yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I feel like we have a really yeah. good plan. I feel like we watch Canadian bacon. We know our stuff. I know. I'm just thinking that, like, maple syrup and... <laughs> Whiskey, Canadian whiskey. You came up with the bacon, of course, which is yeah. just a fancy name for ham, apparently. But it's Canadian pig, maybe. Yeah. You know? Well, Tony, it's been fun. Let's continue this over lunch with the cameras off so we can speak our mind. <laughs> yeah, we're, like so, we haven't been... we're so shy on yeah. video. Is it called video? Sorry. I think it's still. It's a okay. VHS. Okay, just don't drop the tape. I'll take it off.